Yo, what's up guys? It's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going through my brand new, those are extremely bright, up lights from both lighting. These are Chinese up lights and spoiler alert, I've already sold all of my ADJ Element Hex bars because these things are awesome. Let's get into it. Alright guys, before we dive too far into this, I want to give you guys an overview for today's video. So, first off, I'm going to show you guys my up lights right here. I'm going to show you all the nooks and features of it. Also going to show you the cool charging cases, the road cases that you might have seen in my past gig logs. And I'm going to show you all the features of how these lights work, with, whether it's with the remote control right here, or you can hook them up to DMX, and they have built-in wireless DMX, which works with the donor DMX system. We'll get into that a little bit later. But first off here, let's go ahead and take a little walkthrough of the lights themselves. So this right here is the S4 or the Smart 4x18, because there's four diodes, up light from both lighting. And that's how it sounds, both lighting. That is a Chinese brand. I was turned on to this brand by my good friend Joe Bun over in Raleigh. So he has a bunch of these in white and I was like, I need to get some of these too, but I don't really like the white ones. I like the black ones more. I got them. I love them. So this is a four by 18. So each one of these diodes right here is 18 watts and they are hex diodes. That means this is red, green, blue, amber, white, and UV. So it has all the colors you could ever need, the maximum you need for any up lighting themselves. This right here is the manual that comes with them from both lighting. It goes through everything that you possibly need. It's very simple too. So if you need to know your DMX channels to DMX these lights, they're in here as well. Looking at the light itself, the first thing that has got to be the most striking thing ever is that the finish of the light. These are a matte finish and I absolutely love that. The ADJ Element Hex Pars that I had, this is basically a knockoff uh, Chave Freedom Par or a knockoff ADJ Element Hex. It's the same sort of thing. But the ADJ Elements that I had had a glossy finish and they showed fingerprints like no tomorrow. This has a nice matte finish. It's nice. It's clean. I love flat matte color, so that's awesome. And it's solid metal. This is a solid metal construction. Absolutely no plastic. Uh, even got a metal handle right here to grab it and hold it with. On the front right here, we have um, the buttons that we'll go through in a little bit, but we have our wireless DMX built in right here on the front. We have a remote for the IR sensor so you can control it. We have our menu function down here. It is a full color menu display, which is really cool. So you guys might be able to see it there, but it's a full color menu display, really easy to navigate. On the bottom right here, we have a kickstand. So if we need to kick the light up at an angle, we can do so by just pushing it up this little lever. It is a little bit jank, but um, I don't know about you guys, but most of the time I'm not using it for a kickstand, but it works very well. On the bottom right here for inputs, we do have DMX in and out, three pin DMX, and we have PowerCon in and out. So we're using PowerCon connectors on this light and we also have our DMX in and out. On the side here, we actually have our DMX antenna. So uh, you can flip this antenna out. I personally have never needed to flip this antenna out shooting across 100 foot long banquet halls. I've had no issues. Um, so for the most part, it just lays in there, but it does have an extended antenna if you if you need it. Lastly, on the back side here, I have a little sticker indicated it's ours. It also has a threaded mount right here. So if you wish to hook an O-clamp up to this and mount it on trussing, you can do that. And lastly, not to forget, we do have the four diodes up here, but I didn't mention already that this is a glass top. So this is glass, this is solid metal, this thing is a robust beast, and it does have a lip here, if you can see, uh, the little lip cover that's similar to what they have on the Elements or the Freedom Pars. So, that's the light, and when you buy the light, you get the light itself, they send you an IR remote for every single one of your lights, which is complete overkill, because you only need one of these, but if you ever lose it, they send you one for every single light, so if you buy a case of eight, they send you eight of these. They also send you these right here, which are plastic covers. Now, this is not the IP rated version, there is water proof rated ones just like the elements that you can buy from both lighting but a cool little thing they provide these little plastic covers here so if you're using these in an outdoor scenario you can slide these on them and it will cover basically the top of the light the menus it won't cover the ports on the bottom but it will at least keep 
uh, water or damp or dew from getting on top of the light. Um, just a cool little feature that they throw in. They send them along with every single light. I thought that was neat. I thought it was neat because I haven't seen these with the elements before, but they send you these little basically condoms for your lights. If you want to use them outdoors and you're scared it's going to rain, you can put these on them. And then when it does rain, it's not going to kill your lights. Obviously, when it does start raining, you want to go grab all your lights because they're not actually weather rated, but you could attempt that. You could try that. So really cool little feature that they throw these in. Now, obviously, I got all my lights stacked up here for a cool little display and cinematics and all that cool stuff. But when I bought these, they did come in road cases and it's kind of optional. You can buy these in cases that have soft cases, which I don't have. Obviously, I believe they come in packs of four. So there's four per soft case or you can buy them in flight cases and cool part is both lighting will actually make them as big as you want so if you want 10 in one case the standard is eight i'll tell you that right now the standard is eight per case um, but if you want 10 in a case you can get 10 in a case so if that's what works better for your sales packages on up lighting etc you could do that. Let me show you guys the road cases. And I do want to preference. I am going to talk about pricing and how that all breaks down and how they come to you, etc. towards the end of the video. So these are the road cases right here. I have three of them, eight a piece. Probably going to be buying more because these things are awesome. So far, the quality of these road cases is really good. Like we, we've thrown these around. I think we've used them at at least 10 or 12 events so far. They got two handles on both sides. As you can see, I went ahead and labeled everything, put some logos on it, etc. They are stackable, so you'll see a lot of times we stack all these together three high and bring them into events. If we turn this around, we have clamps on the front. We do have two locking casters, one on either corner, and they are all swivel casters. You can swivel it around. When you open the case up, this is in fact a charging case, which is absolutely sick. So when you get the case, it comes with all of the PowerCon connectors to charge all your lights basically flip them in upside down plug them in ready to go and on the side here i already have an iec hooked up to it but we do have the power switch right here to turn it on turn it off you unplug the iec right here you plug it back in um, you can toss it in but it comes with all the cables that you're going to need for the charging case itself so if we take our up light right here this is how we standardly do it flip them upside down inside of the case like so toss them in there that way we can just take one power con Plug it right in here and we're good to go. The cool part about these are with the elements, you like had to turn them on to charge and stuff. With these, you don't have to do that. So if I flick the power on the case on, this light turns red right here. So you can see it right on the inside. That's the charging light. So if I turn this off, it'll turn back to green and kind of see it in there. But when you want to charge these, you turn on the power, that light will turn red. And when it's done charging, it turns green and you're good to go. Sweet, pretty awesome. You don't have to mess with any of the power switches and it's been really reliable and worked out really well for us. I do want to say one little tip. So with art, we DMX all of our up lights and we run two different channels. We run 253 and 243 and we went ahead and labeled them. All four of these up lights are already set to DMX 253. All four of these up lights are already set to DMX 243 and that's the same in every one of our cases. We always use two different DMX channels so that way you can get alternates. Like if I show you right here, I have these hooked up to DMX. You can see right there, we have our two different channels. So these ones on the bottom are 253. These are 243s. And you can see they, they alternate. So that way we can do an alternate of colors around the room, or we can go all standard colors. I have it all pre-programmed in DMX so that we don't have to mess with anything except for setting up our like standard color if they want like a white or a teal or whatever around the room during dinner. If you guys want more info on this, just go to my channel, go to the playlist section and go to lighting. I have a full walkthrough tutorial on how you program in Chave Show Express. That's what I'm using right here. Chave Show Express. I have this one. I have one built into the road case, etc. But I have a full tutorial on how you program in Chave Show Express, how DMX works, all that fun jazz. So if you want more videos on DMX lighting, go check out that playlist. Bunch of videos, bunch of tutorials, explains everything from simple programming, PARs, all the way to programming moving heads. So go check that out if you're interested in DMX lighting. But these are the road cases. Like I said, we've been pretty much abusing them, seeing what they're, uh, if they're durable or whatnot. They've been great. The casters are great, had no issues there. Um, so road cases are solid all the way from China. So back to the light, let's talk about how we actually use it. So um, if we flick it on real quick here, we'll go to our menu and I'll zoom in real quick. You can see that DMX is flashing. Let me fix that real quick. This right here is a good point. So all those up lights that are up, they already already have this done to them. When you're running DMX to these lights, that light stays flashing regardless. You can't turn it off unless you go in and unsolder the LED, but then you don't know what DMX channel you're on. So 
what we do is we take a nice little handy tape and voila, no more bright green light. Back to the menu functionality right here. So let me zoom in for you guys. So we're inside of the menu right here and first thing, on the top left here, you can see if you have wireless DMX, the signal strength. We have really good signal strength. Our battery percentage up here, 100% battery ready to go. And then we have all of our different functionality. So we can go to DMX real quick, press enter. And right here is the DMX channel that we're running. So I'm on 243, like I said, I'm running in 10 channel mode. You can go menu again, click enter. So this is where you select your DMX address. Again, if you don't know anything about DMX, go check out my channel. You can go to the show section if you want to see some pre-made auto shows. No one really cares about that because that's not what you're using. You can do sound mode. So if you like to do sound active mode, you can turn on sound active mode and the light will bounce the music. And you, as you can see right there on the right hand side of the screen, it's actually showing you what it's doing so it's got like four or five different modes in it so if you just want to run it on sound active mode this one is like a strobe only mode so uh number one is probably my favorite and it does a really good job but like i said i don't normally use this unless i'm using my ir remote to change them to so color so you can select a static color so there's all the different 32 different colors that you can select from just like you would any other light or you can create a custom light go through your rgb menu and create your custom color uh, for your color, whatever color you want. Settings, so we can go into settings, and this is where we can go into DMX channel. We can select the channel mode, so you can either run on a six channel mode for all six of your different individuals, or 10. I always run on 10. We're gonna go to menu. We can do 2.4. This is where you can turn on and off the actual DMX. So actually, this is a good point. If you don't want to run DMX, you can actually shut off this LED, and it will stay off. So if you click DMX and turn it off, it gets rid of the actual indicator up here, and the LED turns off. So we always run on though. So like I said, the LED is always on. So below the 2.4 gigahertz wireless DMX, we can go to infrared and we can turn infrared on and off. And this is for the remote control. So if I turn it back on, the IR pops up here at the top and now we can use our wireless IR remote. In counter to that, if you don't want to use the IR remote and you don't want it to be an available feature on the light, so if someone has an IR remote, they can't mess with your light, you can turn it off, which is what we typically do. Display backlight, so you can turn the backlight to really dim or you can make it really bright, etc. We can go back to menu, LECD close time. So I have it set to five seconds that means after five seconds this will go black so it just keeps it black and then uh, below that we have restore factory settings and manual so below that we have battery I don't know why you would want to turn battery off but if you want to get rid of the battery symbol you can um, I'm pretty sure you want to see what your battery level is at so you can turn it back on there's one thing that I'll point out later this battery indicator up here is not exactly the most accurate in the world it's, uh, you guys have seen since I've started, this has dropped from 100 to 87. That's not entirely true, but we'll get that in a little bit. And then lastly, background color. So if you wanna change the background color that the light menu's on from not being black to something else, you can do that. After that, there's help, which is help. It tells you all the information about the light, even the temperature. So that is all of the functionality in the menu. Let me show you guys how the remote works and all the DMX and all that fun stuff. So right now the light is hooked up to DMX, but with the IR remote that I have here, since we have it on, we can mess around with it. So if we turn the light on, we can go to green, red, or blue, or white. So we have all of the different colors. We got our amber, UV. We can go through all the pre-made colors that are down here on the little options menu. We can go to auto show. So this is just an automatic light show that will run in sequence. You can go to strobe. It'll strobe the light very slowly. You have fade. So if you want just a classy little fade, it'll do a fade. So after fade, if you want to go to sound, that's the last button, you click on sound. And now the button is, is, or now the light is in sound mode. So if I tap the light, obviously music will activate this a lot better, but it's bouncing to the music or the sound that the light hears itself. And that right there in a nutshell is all of the usability of the light besides DMX. Now, like I said, I don't use these. We use DMX, we use DMX for everything. Um, so let me show you guys the best part about these lights and the reason why I sold all my ADJ element hex bars. 
and that is because this light works directly with donor wireless DMX. So for you guys that are unfamiliar, this right here is a donor wireless DMX transmitter. So what this does is you plug this into your DMX device. It does not have to be the Shabe Show Express box that I have here. It can be your ADJ My DMX Bridge. It can be your ADJ Go DMX Bridge. Whatever your DMX device is, you plug this into the DMX out. And then that will transmit the DMX signal to all donor wireless receivers. So in the case of my old ADJ Element Hex part, I love those lights. But the problem is they operate on the wireless DMX system known as ADJ Wi-Fi. So there's different DMX wireless systems. So donor is one. Donor has its own and it's probably the most universal wireless DMX chain. Then there's ADJ's Wi-Fi system, which is a whole nother system. And the problem is ADJ's Wi-Fi does not talk to donor wireless DMX. So to get the element hexes to work on wireless DMX, you have to plug one of these guys into one of the element hexes and then the element hexes will talk to each other. In the case of these uplights right here, this wireless built-in DMX right here is donor wireless DMX. It's the same system. So each one of these colors is a different DMX group. So I run on the blue group and when I turn on blue, it turns blinking green. And that is because my transmitter is set to the blue channel as well. It's blinking red, that means it's receiving signal, but there's a little button in there that you can press with a little pinhole basically, or a little paper clip. You change that to the blue channel, you change your lights to the blue channel, and then they all talk together. And the nice part is that it's built in, so you don't need to mess with this, you don't have to mess with anything. You just drop these lights around the room, turn them on, and they work. Again, if you need more info on DMXing, go check out that playlist. But the question you're all asking probably right now is how much do they cost, and are they worth it? So exactly how much do they cost? That's hard to say because the biggest thing with these lights right here is freight shipping from China. Like I mentioned, these are from China, so you have to pay freight shipping. And typically, it the shipping costs about the same for 12 lights as it does for 24 lights as it does for 36. It's not much difference. Shipping is just like one set fee and it's going to be quite a bit of money. And beyond that, the price actually fluctuates a little bit from season to season. And I can't really tell you what the best price is, but I can tell you how much I myself have paid for these and how much other people have paid for them as well. Per light, they're around 80 to 100 bucks which if you're considering how much the name brands one cost is extremely cheap, but we haven't accounted for shipping yet. So to save you the math and everything and all the complicatedness of it, I'll basically tell you how much I paid. So I paid a little over $3,000. So it was like 30, I think it was $3,200 for 24 of these lights in the powering road cases with all the cables and all the shipping and everything. It was flat $3,200. So basically, one flight case of eight lights is about a thousand dollars if you're looking at the other competitors out there is significantly cheaper now these are chinese direct so you got to keep that in mind these are chinese direct lights so one thing that these lights don't necessarily have is quality control that's one thing to keep in mind and that was one thing when i was talking to my good friend joe bun who has i think a hundred plus of these lights was talking about the reliability of these lights so you will I have not experienced it yet, but Joe has told me over the hundreds of lights that he has now, I think he has over a hundred of these up lights, he's had one or two fail over time. So either the LCD screen is broke or one of the diodes stops working, but it's kind of relatively simple stuff to fix that if you find an electronics store near you, they could probably fix it for a hundred bucks or so. But to not get into too much detail, what I'm trying to say is that if you want to buy these lights, right? Keep in mind, if you're, if you're doing the comparison on other competitors, this is a four by 18, 18 watts per diode. It, it ain't no low wattage. These things are bright and I'm pretty sure they were brighter than my ADJ L and the hex bars. I never did side by side, but these seem to be brighter. Anyways, four by 18, keep that in mind. It's gonna run you about $1,000 per case. Do not 100% rely that all the lights are going to work over time. Keep in mind, so like if you're taking up lights to an event, say you need to send 12 out to an event, bring like 14 so that you have two spares in case something breaks or something fails down the line or just take the chance. I'm not saying that it's going to happen. Like I said, I've had these since March. I've had all 24 since March. I sent them out to, I think, 12 plus events now. Had no issues. They're working flawlessly. Like they all work perfectly. No issues at all. So 
I just want to like throw that out there. These are super cheap, but you don't have the quality control that you'll have from the name brand manufacturers. If one of these breaks, it's a lot harder to get a hold of a Chinese company to get a replacement or a part or anything like that than it is to contact a US based company and be like, hey, this light doesn't work. The cheaper price does come at some disadvantages when it comes to the back end stuff. Now let's get into my review. Like I've said, I've already sold all of my other up lights. I'm sticking with these from here on out. I absolutely love them, highly recommend them. They're amazing, they're awesome, everything, all that above stuff. Some little quirks and features though of these lights to keep in mind. One, this little thing, I've kind of already mentioned it, the little like clamping right here. This thing like bends really easily and like it gets stuck sometimes. Um, and this like bottom hinge thing is not the highest quality in the world. Like it's kind of jank to say the least, um, but I never use it. So uh, it's not really a feature that I care about. It works if I need it to work, but it's, it's kind of jank. If you use that a lot, it's not the greatest in the world. Secondly, kind of already talked about it, but uh, we put gaff tape over this bright green LED. I use this for like two gigs with that bright green LED blinking all the way around the room and all the different lights, it was really annoying, especially when this side is the side of the shield. So this is the side that you face towards the crowd. So that blinking green light is really annoying. And thankfully my assistant Drake was like, dude, let's just put some gaff tape on them. And I was like, yeah, do that. I did come at one little con though, because this tapes over it, we've had it where it, um, it gets the button stuck. So uh, what we should do is actually just tape over the light only. Um, but we kind of just tape over the whole thing um, to be a little bit easier. But it has like got that button stuck, so we have to like pull this tape back and push the button again to get it to work. But that's just a little hiccup. The matte finish, I've already said it, it's amazing. Wireless DMX range. The range on these is really, 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 really good. I, I Like this thing is awesome. Like I said, this antenna does pop out here on the side. Like you can pop it out if you need better signal. I've never done that, but I will say at some venues when I'm like 100 feet away from my DMX uh, transmitter, it would be beneficial to go do that because I have seen where it's like not picked up the signal like once, like if we're running sound active lights and all the lights are bouncing, there might be like one of those pulses where it just doesn't get the color. Like if it's going like red, green, blue, red, green, blue, it might go red, misses the green, then blue, then red, green, blue. Uh, that's just that really long distances. It's not really that big of a deal to say the least. And the last thing, battery life. Battery life on these things so far, keep in mind, I've only had these since March, so March, April, May, June, so that. That's only nine months and we were only using them for about three months of the year because you know, gigs really didn't come back till the end of the year and now it's shut down again. Whole nother story. If you're watching this from the future, I hope COVID is like no, no longer a thing because it's really annoying right now. But like I was saying kind of earlier, the battery life indicator on this is not entirely accurate because the first gig I used these at, I was I was completely scared that these things are about to shut off because they dropped from 100% to 40% in the first two hours. Like no lie, like almost all of them were reading 40 to 50% only two hours into using these lights. And I was like, holy shit, we're about, I'm about to be screwed. But in the back of my head, I was going, Joe Bunn uses these lights all the time, so they're, they must last. And um, he's right. So what happens is, I don't know if like the computer's just not that good, um, but it'll drop down to like 50% and then it'll just stay there. It, it's really weird. Like it'll drop the 80, 70, and then down to like 50% really quick. And then it kind of stays between 50 and 40 for like three to four hours. Like it's, it's actually incredible. And I actually found that out through testing because after the first event, I wanted to make sure that these things were going to last as long as I needed them to. So what I did was I set up a little test rig here in the garage and I set up three of these lights. I put one of the lights on a fade, so it was just fading through all the colors. I put one light on absolutely the maximum brightness. So it was literally on 100%, every fader, red, green, blue, amber, UV, everything on max brightness, like the worst case scenario for the light. So one was on fade, one was on the maximum brightness, and then one was just on a generic static color. And I believe I made pink. So I put red and blue on and that was it. And what I found out from my testing, now keep in mind, I only tested one light a piece and it was at the beginning of the battery life. Obviously battery life diminishes a little bit over time as you cycle them and everything. But the light that was on for the maximum, maximum brightness lasted six hours. The light that was on fade 
lasted 10 hours, and then the light that was going pink with the red and blue lasted 12 hours before it officially died. And um, let me tell you right now, that is some impressive ass battery life. The to say the least like because for the most part if you're using these they're gonna be on like that pink color or they're gonna be doing fades or they're not even gonna be on the whole time like if you use them like I do they're doing music so they're like bouncing to the music um, so they'll be like red for a second green for a second blue for a second so they're not using the maximum battery life so at the worst case scenario I got six hours of battery life but in reality you're probably gonna get anywhere from eight to ten hours and for me using these out at a typical wedding Normally we end the night and it says anywhere from 30 to 40 percent battery still left in the light Which basically means it has another two hours at least left in the battery tank to keep going Which um, is more than enough for all of our events. So battery life. I'm thrilled Honestly, it's better than my last life. Yo, it's Ricky from the future because after filming this video We were going through the editing process with my editor and I got contacted by uh, both lighting. They sent me uh, a message and they said, Rick, uh, we've been noticing that there's a lot of comments. You guys are really interested in these uplights that I've been using this year. And they're like, Rick, would you like to partner up with us and possibly become a dealer to sell these in the United States? And I would, looked into it. I had some back and forth and uh, voila, I am a dealer. So keep it short. If you guys are interested in buying these lights, I am a US dealer for both lighting, so I can get you guys pricing, you'll work directly with me, um, it's awesome. So if you guys are interested in the uplights that I'm showing you, uh, I have the S4 par, so that means there's four diodes. They also have an S6, it's the exact same, but it has six diodes. The only difference, it's about the same brightness, um, but the only difference is a wider beam angle. So these have a 40 degree beam angle. Uh, the S6 have a 25 degree bang, beam angle and uh, those charging cases that I showed you they actually come in 6, 8, 10 or I believe 12 you can get in one charging case but if you guys need pricing or you want to look into buying these uplights I can definitely cut you a pretty good deal uh, being a dealer for them um, but hit me up djrickwebinfo at gmail.com djrickwebinfo at gmail.com it's on the screen it's in the description down below anyways guys that right there is a quick little walkthrough and everything you really need to know about my new uplights from Bow Lighting, Chinese company. I mentioned this before. I can't highly recommend these enough. I've actually already kind of messaged a few of you guys and told you about getting them. And I know a few of you guys have already bought them and you're loving them as well. So um, this was a very highly requested video because I've been using these for gigs all this year. And you guys have been seeing them in the gig logs and you're like, what are these uplights? These are not the uplights he used to have. So that's them. They're the both lighting S4 pars. They're the 4x18s. They are not IP rated. And like I said from the, the earlier, they're about $1,000 for a case of eight of these uh, from China shipped and everything. So that is all the details, guys. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Leave down in the comments down below what you guys think of these lights. Do any of you guys have them? Are you rocking them? Uh, any questions, leave them down there. If you got any questions, Instagram at DJ Rick Webb. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. The subscribe, I can't speak. The subscribe button. Turn on post notifications. Check out DJ Life Clothing if you like this hoodie right here. And like always, guys, keep them records spinning, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.